Welcome to Free Video Hub. We are starting a new course called Business Information Systems. In that, our first chapter is Introduction to Information Systems. Now, let's try to understand the basic principles of it. The value of information is directly linked to how uh, it helps the decision makers to achieve the organizational goals. Computers and information systems are constantly making it possible for organizations to improve the way they conduct business. And knowing the potential and impact of information systems and having the ab ability to put this knowledge to work and result in a successful personal career. Now, system users, business managers, and information system professionals must work together to build a successful information system. Now, information system must be applied thoughtfully and carefully so that the society, business, and industry can get the maximum benefit out of it. So information systems plays an important role in getting the right data at the right time, and it helps the decision makers in making the right decisions. So whenever we are talking about information systems, the first thing that comes to our mind is a system. Now, your book is defining a system as a set of elements or components that interact uh, uh, to accomplish a goal. Whenever we think of a system, always there is an input, there is a processing, and then there is an output. Consider an example of a student if he's getting a grade in this course, which is a B plus, and then he's taking lots of other courses till the end of the degree plan. We'll enter the grades in the system. For each course, the system would process it. And at the end of the term or at the end of the degree plan, he'll get a report where he'll be able to see the grades that he got in all the courses. So that's the output. It can be in the form of a report. Now, there are guys who are constantly monitoring the system and they are suggesting or the, in case of a feedback, if there is a way to improve the outlook or the output of the transcript, they can provide a feedback and then it can be improved. There are lots of examples which you can think of whenever we talk about a system. After system, we have information. Now, there is a difference between a data and an information. Let's see what they are talking about when they say information. Information is a collection of facts. So whenever we uh, want to get some uh, information, detailed information about something, uh, we talk about the facts. It can take many forms from text numbers, images, audio clips, and the video clips, etc. It's closely related to data. The data is, a, is usually in a raw form uh, where it's not compiled. It cannot produce any results. We cannot get any, uh, we cannot make any decisions based on that data. Now, data could be anything just like, uh, just going back again to the example of the students. Uh, in student's case, a student got a uh, grade at the end of the quiz, for example. He got eight marks out of 10. Now, every student would have data about his own course or his own quiz. You don't know uh, that what's the average of the uh, class in that quiz, whether he's at the average, at the maximum, or at the minimum, because every student has his own grade in that specific quiz. Once we'll compile all that result and we'll calculate the average, maximum, and minimum, only then the student can judge that where is he standing at the moment, whether his marks are the best at the top or he's somewhere in the middle. So once we compiled all that data, it gave us some information, and based on that, we can take some decisions. Now here they are compiling up all those things, system and information. An information system is a set of interrelated components that collect input, manipulate and store, which is process, and disseminate, which is output information and provide a feedback mechanism to meet an objective. An information system is an activity of gathering and capturing the data. Processing means converting and transforming this input into a useful output, and output involves producing useful information, usually in the form of documents and reports. Now, feedback is an inform information from the system that is used to make changes to input processing and activities. Now, to be useful, we'll have to see that the characteristics of a valuable information, what are these characteristics, and how do we rate them. The useful, uh, to be useful, manager's information should have some possible or all of the following characteristics. So first of all, the information must be accessible. It should be easily accessible to the authorized user so that they can obtain the right format and the right time to meet the needs. 
then it should be accurate it accurate means that the information should not have any sort of errors and it should be generated because inaccurate data is fed into the transformation process etc inaccurate data leads inaccurate information it should be complete complete information contains all of the important facts but not more facts than they are necessary economical means that the information should also be relatively economical to produce uh, decision makers must always balance the value of information with the cost of producing it it should be flexible where we uh, should be able to make any changes or necessary changes in the data it should be relevant information uh, which is important for the decision makers it should be a reliable information where we can rely on the facts on the data which is generated and realistic it should be secure that only authorized users must have access to it it should be simple and easy to understand a timely report should be available and the data should be verifiable that you can check that actually uh, that's the report of the daily sales that you have made on the system now the manual and computerized systems the difference between them is huge manual uh, manual uh, file systems you might have seen in the old offices where they were maintaining the data in the folders and uh, registers and in case if they want to get any information about a specific user it was really difficult to search and update the information an information system can be manual for example paper based or computerized a computer by uh, computerized information system or computer based information system which we call cbis is a single set of hardware software database telecommunication people and procedures that are configured to collect manipulate and store the data so we are using databases we are using telecommunication people are entering the data we have procedures policies etc and then we are collecting it in the form of a database now in a hardware um hardware consists of computer equipment um uh, that is used to perform input processing anything that you can touch for example keyboard mouse pointing devices etc are the hardware devices now the processing devices include computer chips that contain the central processing unit which is cpu and the main memory which is ram of the computer output devices include computer screens and printers etc now softwares are anything which help us in uh, getting our things uh, done in a professional way consist of computer programs govern the operations of the computer there are two kind of uh, of software system software controls the basic computer operations including the start input input and output an example is microsoft applications where you can use microsoft excel etc and you can use word processing for drawing charts and other things as well now a database is an organized collection of facts and information typically consisting of two or more related files an organization database can contain information for example customers employees inventory com uh, competitor sales online purchases and much more now the question arises that we can have the excel sheet as well but why do we need a database an excel sheet is good if you have data which can be, uh, on which you are performing some calculations but it cannot update the records here and there and it should perform certain operations locally on the computer consider the sales that are happening on a website if you have a website and you are selling certain items on that of course you cannot maintain the data using the excel sheets you need a database at the back end it could be anything depending what kind of environment you are in we have mysql databases we have sql databases we have oracle databases there are a number of other databases but whenever you are dealing with a website where you are having certain transactions buying or selling or anything so in order to collect the data of the users their um, login details their credit card details and lots of other things it's only possible through the database the other beauty of the database is it can help us in calculating the daily reports and the overall statistics of the items which are being sold and the number of hits etc now the telecommunications and networks and internet plays an important role whenever we talk about information systems telecommunications is the electronic transmission of the signals or communications which enable organizations to carry out their processes and tasks through the computer networks because nowadays we are connected uh, using the networks and we use the telecommunication devices which could be our mobile phones which could be computers which could be telephones which could be voice over ips etc 
And we use the networks which connect the computers and equipment in a building around the country or around the world which enable the electronic communication between these different networks. Just like if you're traveling from your country to any other country, still you are able to use your mobile with the same same end number, you'll be receiving a call because you are on roaming. Of course, there are additional charges for that, but thanks to the technology, you are able and you are still connected. Though you are traveling, you're not inside your own country. The internet is the world's largest computer network and actually consisting of thousands of interconnected networks which can freely exchange the information. When we are talking about internet and communications and networks, please keep in mind that there is a concept called cloud computing. Cloud computing is a, is a computing environment where software and storage are, provide, um, are provided as the internet service as we access via a web browser. So our services are hosted in the cloud, your storage, your services, your applications, each and everything, and you'll be accessing the services from the cloud. Regardless where you are at the moment, it helps you in being connected to the uh, databases and the information. Then we have intranet and extranet as well. Intranet is the network within the organization where you can share certain things which you don't want to show on the internet. So it is accessible only within the network. Extranet is a new thing and it is used for a network based on web technologies that allow selected outsiders such as business partners, suppliers or customers to access the authorized resources of a company. So only those users will have access to the resources. Now after that we have people. Now people are the most important element and it's the most uh, um, in most computer based systems because these are the people who are entering the data and maintaining the systems. People involved uh, uh, include users of the system, information system personals, which include the people who manage and run the programs and man maintain the systems. Then we have procedures. Procedures are policies. Procedures include the strategies, methods, and rules using the computer-based information systems, including the operations, maintenance, security of the computers. Now, good procedures can help maintain and um, help companies to take advantage of new opportunities and avoid the potential disasters. And poorly developed and inadequate implemented procedures can cause people to waste their time, result in ad inadequate response, to disasters, etc. Plus, if the procedures are not aligned with your business needs and if they are too restricted, usually people complain and they react to the system. So our procedures must be realistic. So people must understand it and adapt it so that we can reach our business goals. Then we have business information systems. Now, business information systems mean that the most common type of information systems used as business organizations are those designed for electronic and mobile commerce. Transaction processing, management information systems, and decision support systems. We'll be covering all those things in the uh, next few slides. These systems help employees and organizations to accomplish the routine of a specific task. They are often integrated in one product to deliver the same software package. For example, enterprise resource planning uh, systems, packages, process transactions, deliver information, and support decisions. Now, these are the information systems which help us reaching the goals. Whenever we think of business information systems, we have three levels of it, which is operational level, then we have tactical level, and then we have strategic level. The operational level where we have day-to-day -day running uh, tasks are there. Uh, we have transaction processing systems, customer relationship and management system, and supply chain management systems. Then above that, there is a tactical level. In, there, in that, we have management information systems and decision um, and support systems through which we make the decisions. It supports the midterm um, uh, mid decisions made by the middle managers, etc. And then we have strategic level, which is the top level executive support systems, which support the long-term strategic decisions made by senior managers based on the goals and what they are actually trying to gain in next uh, couple of years or in five years, etc. Now we have uh, electronic and mobile commerce uh, communications. E-commerce involves any business transactions executed electronically. Sometimes of businesses or some kind of businesses that you see are B2B, B2C, and C2C and mobile commerce. Now, when we are talking about these things, keep in mind that if two businesses are interacting with each other, it's called business to business. 
For example, I am a company, I am manufacturing computers, but I am not manufacturing hard disk, RAMs, and CPUs. So if I'll deal with another business which is supplying all these items, so now my company, which is a business itself, is dealing with another company which is dealing in certain things. So that communication between the companies is called business to business. Now business to consumer is Amazon.com or eBay.com where there is a business which is Amazon or eBay and they are selling things to the consumer. So it's a commerce between the companies and consumer. Now consumer to consumer is a website, for example, where people are posting stuff that they are selling certain items and the buyers are also consumers who are interested into certain items. So both consumers are selling items to the consumers. There are lots of websites for that. We put them in the category of consumer to consumer. B2B represents the major volume of the e-commerce and its fastest growing segment. Mobile commerce refers to the transactions conducted anywhere, anytime mobile commerce relies to the wireless communications that we are doing these days on contactless point of sales where we are um, having the transactions through our mobile phones, NFC fields, and um, the uh, money is transferred to the company and using the portable phones, laptops, or connected devices through the network and mobile devices. Now, the, we have a thing called Enterprise Resource Planning Systems, a set of interconnected programs capable of managing the company's vital business operations for entire multi-site global organization. Now, there are lots of ERPs which are available in the market. The biggest name in the market is SAP. Then we have Oracle eBusiness. Then we have uh, uh, JD AdWords. Then we have PeopleSoft as well. There are a number of enterprise resource planning systems. And now, um, which kind of enterprise resource planning system you want to implement? It really uh, depends on your kind of business. It has small modules which can be integrated in a system just like puzzles. And once they are integrated together, they start talking to each other. Now take an example of an educational institution. We are starting admissions in a university. So we'll buy an ERP and we'll get the module for admissions only and would implement it in our institution. Now that would take care of all the admissions process. Now, after a few months, we'll think that it should be linked to the alumni management system. So we'll purchase an alumni management system from the same ERP and we'll integrate it in the system. As soon as it's integrated, just like a puzzle, both of them would start interacting with each other because the database is centrally located and both of them know the hierarchy and the structure of the database. So it would start sharing the information from the alumni management system and the admission system and it grows later uh, if you want to include a finance module or you want to add the admissions um, in, ad uh, in addition to admissions if you want to add the uh, transcripts or um, the registration or scheduling or student affairs and other departments so they can all be integrated together and all the information within the system would be shared among those things. So. It really depends what kind of organization you are in and what is your uh, core needs of a business. Now, the scope of an ERP system might vary from company to company, and ERP might do the job of some or all of the other business information system, particularly the transaction processing systems, management information systems, and decision support systems. We'll be covering it shortly. They are used to schedule inventory, purchase, and manufacturing processes so that the right number of products are built at the right time to meet the customers and so that you can keep control of the inventory and you are not manufacturing the items more than the need. First of all, you'll um, uh, you'll hold your capital. Um, it would take space on the warehouse. So you'll have to make sure that you are manufacturing the items which are required in the business. Now we have transaction processing systems. Now transaction, transaction processing systems are the systems um, uh, which helps us in organized collection, people, procedures, and software databases and devices used to record complete business transactions. Now, any business um, is using transaction processing systems. It's an organization, uh, it's, it's an organized collection of people, procedures, software databases, and devices used to record completed business transactions. 
if we want to calculate the transactions which took place on daily basis, for example, the number of items sold in a day, uh, um, all that data which is collected by that in addition to calculation of value added taxes and all those things is all done by transaction processing systems. Then we have management information systems. Management information systems are organized collection of people, procedures, software, databases, and devices that provide routine information to managers and decision makers. So it would compile the complete report and it would show us the complete report that how many items were sold, how many are there in stock, what are the top selling items, and all the details at the end of the day. So it is a typically report which is generated using the data of transaction processing systems. Now we have decision support systems. Decision support systems are organized collection of people, procedures, software, databases, and devices used to support the problem-specific decisions. Now, a human being is still in charge of making or taking the decision, unlike the system, with artificial intelligence. What these systems does is they'll collect the data from transaction processing systems and management information systems, and then they'll um, uh, generate a report of a month, for example, that on which day you had the maximum sales, what's the peak period, what are the hot selling items, what are the hours on which most of your customers are active? So you target your campaigns according to the statistics by these decision support systems, which help you in reaching the right decisions. Now, it's also talking about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the ability of a computer system to mimic and depict the functions or characteristics of the human brain intelligence. We can see artificial intelligence in lots of systems, for example, expert systems, neural networks, then learning systems, vision systems, robotics, you name it. There are lots of examples of it. You might have seen for the uh, blind, uh, blind spot detection in cars, uh, advanced braking system, uh, collision detection system. So the cameras and the artificial intelligence is constantly monitoring, though you are driving the car, but if it would see an obstacle in front, it would automatically apply the brakes. Now, after decision support systems, we have uh, specialized business information systems, which we call uh, knowledge management systems. Now, knowledge management systems are organized collection of people, procedures, software, databases, and devices to create, store, share, and use the information and knowledge and experience. Now, artificial intelligence attempts to have computer system to take the characteristics of human intelligence. We have discussed it already. Then we have virtual reality. It's a simulation of a real world imagined in an environment that can be experienced virtually in three dimensions. There are lots of implications of uh, virtual reality and artificial intelligence. The basic example could be in virtual reality, most of the blueprints or the maps of the buildings or malls or the houses that you want to make, nowadays people are making a 3D or a virtual reality for that and they'll give you a 3D tour, a real-time tour of your house, how it would look like from inside, from outside and all those things. So you can have a first-hand experience of your own house which is yet to be constructed. So that's the beauty of virtual reality. We have lots of games on that and then we have lots of tools uh, which are using artificial intelligence and virtual reality. Now we discussed about the expert systems as well. They are also part of the knowledge-based systems which are used for the uh, business information systems. Now we have uh, system development. It's an activity of creating, modifying a business system. The main stages are system investigation, system analysis, system design, system implementation, and system maintenance and reviews. Now system development lifecycle, SDLC, plays an important role whenever you want to um, make something out of the scratch. Uh, first of all, you have system investigations where a clear understanding of the problem uh, to be solved is developed. Then we have system analysis where the problems and opportunities of the existing system are defined. Then we have system design which determines how the new system will work to meet the business needs defining the system analysis so that you'll conduct a survey within the organization, you'll ask the concerned departments that what are their requirements and you'll develop the system accordingly. 
System implementation includes, uh, which involves creating and acquiring the various system components, whatever is required for the system. For example, computers, hardware, software databases defined in the system design and assembling them to put them into a new system into operation. And then the system maintenance and review means that it would keep on checking and modifying the system um, so that you can meet the changing business needs. Then we have security and privacy, which is uh, um, very important these days that you must be aware of the security uh, and privacy fears which persist with the computer users. Many people experience cyberbullying at home or school or work, where people would be uh, posting whatever they want to post, but there are some ethical boundaries for that. Many criminal gangs are trying to steal financial transactions through your credit cards. Lots of fake advertisements are there on uh, social media profiles, and they are targeting the users to click on those links, and they'll end up on a lookalike fake website of a vendor, for example, pizza or burgers, etc. You'll make the transactions, and then you'll find out that the website was fake. Some information system professionals believe that the computers may create new opportunities for unethical behavior. Unethical investors have placed false rumors or incorrect information about the companies on the internet and uh, tried to influence its stocks prices to make money, etc. So you must carefully check that which are the actual websites and what are fake websites which are um, available on internet. To protect against these and other threats, security and control measures can be installed, which could protect us from any kind of problems related to that. Then we have security control measures. In order to be protected, we have firewalls in the organizations, which protect us from unauthorized users accessing our network from outside. So firewalls maintains the overall policies that who is able to access which things and who is not allowed to access certain things. For example, if you are in an institution and you don't want certain users to access ser certain servers, you'll block it using the firewalls. You can block access to certain websites. You can block certain categories. You can block lots of things through firewalls through the policies where we'll allow the timings as well as the users when they can access and then when can they cannot access. Antivirus programs are the programs which provide protect us for any kind of viruses, worms, or um, malwares, etc., which we receive through the internet in forms of email attachments, etc. Password protection should be there, that your password must be protected. Um, there are second and third layers of protections, as you might have seen, Google Authenticator, etc. Physical protection means security guards outside the room where the servers are located, etc., are there, which physically control and keep tracks of who's entering those protected areas, their um, entry time and their exit times. And security procedures must be there where users must change the passwords on every month or instance so that if their password is leaked out, still they are secure because they are constantly changing their passwords. So that was about introduction to information systems.